My name is Scott Johnston. I'm a cross-country ski coach and have been a cross-country skier most of my life. I've been a coach for a number of years for the uh, junior program, the Meta Valley Nordic team, and I also coach uh, elite level skiers that are part of the Meta Olympic Development Project. On the ski bench here, what we have is um, a skating ski. And we're going to go through how to wax this ski and prepare it to go out and, and use it. So to start with, there's the notion that um, there are two different types of skiing, one being uh, skating and one being classic skiing. And the skating will put um, a special wax from the tip all the way to the tail of the ski. So but we're starting now with the, with the, um, the glide wax of a skating ski. And the reason we have to wax these skis is that the, the, the ski is made with um, a plastic bottom made from a special type of plastic that is um, somewhat porous so that the wax can be absorbed into the base of the ski. And in order to have that happen, we need to heat the wax up and melt it into the base of the ski. The base actually expands a little bit and the pores of the base open and the wax impregnates the, the base. And then we'll scrape it off. Um, and you can go out and ski on it. There are a whole variety of different waxes available for ski bases and we're going to start with the fairly basic and simplest type of wax. Um, the, the wax can be bought in blocks that look something like this or if they can be bought in bigger blocks like this and generally the thing that determines which type of wax you're going to be wanting to use is both the temperature and the humidity, and then lastly, the age of the snow, how long the snow has been on the ground, and because the snow is constantly um, going through a process of metamorphosis, and it, as it ages, the snow crystal shape changes, and then that um, makes their, the crystals respond differently to different types of waxes. The colder the snow and the newer the snow, the harder the wax wants to be. The older the snow and the wetter the snow, the softer the wax will be. Those are just very general. The colder waxes tend to be colored either blue or green, and the warmer waxes tend to be colored um, yellow like this. And you can see there's a variety of little scrap pieces here, um, different colors of wax. We're going to just put some blue on today. Usually this time of year with um, cold conditions, cold snow, blue wax will typically be what we want to use. So to get started, the first thing you need to do is be able to mount the ski in some sort of a bench, uh, to, uh, so a fixture to hold it. This is a, a homemade type of a bench um, that you notice it follows the, the form, follows the shape of the ski, allows us to do some work on the ski and, and support it really um, securely while it's being held in this vise. These benches can be made really simply out of a piece of two by six and some a little bit of metal to make the, the clamp or you can purchase commercially made ones like this and you can even just use a couple of chair backs to support the ski. I've done that myself and it works pretty well. So and then it's also helpful to have an iron and the iron needs to be um, these this is a special waxing iron and the waxing iron has a temperature dial that you can see here <clears throat> that allows us to adjust the temperature of the iron, iron based on the type of wax we're going to be putting on. You can also use a clothes iron. It's best to use a non-steam iron because the steam irons have holes in them and the wax gets in the holes and it gets kind of grungy after a while. But you can go to the, a thrift shop or a um, you know, Goodwill or something and pick up an iron for a few bucks and they work just fine. You no normally want to set it on the... Um, cotton setting when you're using a normal iron. One of the one rule is that you never want the wax to smoke. If the wax smokes, you're getting the, the ski is going to be getting too hot and um, that's not good on the plastic because these skis are glued together with uh, temperature sensitive glues and if you overheat the ski you can damage the ski and most likely will damage the ski. So one of the ways that we do this, one way to, to apply the wax is to rub it on like a cork and then we can heat it in. A lot of people like to do this because they feel like it protects the base of the ski from the heat of the iron. Another way to apply the wax is to just drip it on to the ski and you notice how I hold the ski, the, the iron right on the ski and I just 
and the, holding the wax on the up base of the iron. Just run it down one side of the groove and then back along the other side of the groove. Then to heat the wax into the ski, what we want to do is put the, wax, the iron flat on the ski and move it from tip to tail. And that process, if the wax is the right tem temperature, if the iron is the right temperature, you'll notice that the iron completely liquefies the wax and um, this, the iron just sort of floats on top of the wax. And you don't want to keep the iron stationary on the ski because then you do run into the problem of possibly overheating the ski base. And after I make a pass like that, now you see how it looks quite different. I'll come back and make another pass or two. And these passes should take you know, between five and 10 seconds. That way you're keeping the iron moving on the ski. It's generally not a good idea to go back and forth like this on the ski because you tend to overheat one or two spots on the ski and that again can cause the glue to break down that's holding the ski together. So that's about the extent of what it takes to apply the wax. So it's really not too big of a job. They make a lot of tools for working on skis and um, one of the tools that we use to scrape out the groove is this little device here called a groove scraper. And um, it, there's other things you can do to scrape the groove with, but these things work really well and they're pretty darn cheap. Um, it's important now that, we, now that we've got the wax on the ski, we have to get all of the excess wax off the ski. And once the wax has cooled for just a few moments, then we'll take a plastic scraper like this. I've got a whole series of them here. And these are made of a uh, hard plastic with a sharp edge on them that allows us to scrape the excess wax off the ski and it just leaves wax in the ski. It does seem a little odd to put all that wax on and then scrape it right back off. But what we're really after is getting wax into the ski base, not on top of it. So now that it's cooled, we're ready to uh, scrape the wax. There's a, a bit of a technique to holding the scraper that, so that you, get this, you can use the scraper in the, to the best advantage on the ski. And that is to grip it in a manner like this with your thumbs sort of in the center, index fingers wrapped over the top, put this, the um, scraper down on the tip of the ski, holding it at a little bit less than vertical to this ski base and push. And you'll notice how it shaves off the wax. In a few strokes like this, we can get most of the wax off the top surface of the ski. Now, for most of our application, and we can run the, down the edges to make sure we've gotten the little drips that fell off the sides of the ski. And that's pretty much all it takes to scrape the ski. Now, the skis, the skis come from the factory with a pattern that's ground into the base. Um, and to clear that pattern of excess wax, we can use these small brushes. And this one happens to have very fine steel bristles, um, but a whole variety are available with brass or nylon bristles. And we just take this and kind of scrub it down the length of the ski, and that tends to reach into the the finer structure on the base of the plastic ski, the plastic base of the ski, excuse me, and lift excess wax. You can see there's a little bit of a powder that forms as I do this. And once you've done that, the ski is pretty much ready to be skied on.